a child of God. I belong to you, Jesus. We belong to you, Jesus. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me your love has called my name i want everyone to say that with me say from my mother's womb come on you have chosen me love has called my name I've been born again to this family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. Yes, I am. I am a child. I will not be afraid because I am a child. I will not be overwhelmed because I am a child. Come on, say, I will not be afraid because I am a child of God. One more time. I am a child of God. Hallelujah. I am a child of God. While we are standing, don't sit down yet. We're going to pray for someone this morning. Lindsay came and told me, Pastor, please pray for Lindsay's dad. He's going to go through a bypass surgery this coming Tuesday. I believe in the power of prayer. Because that's, uh, I tasted that in my life many times. I know this church prays. Now, this is a praying church. I, I, you have a good heart and when you pray, the Lord hear. And as a church prayed, uh, Peter was delivered from the prison and the church prayed many things have happened here in the time past and you prayed for me I remember and I, you prayed for many other things this morning as a church we're going to pray for Lindsay's dad he's going to have a bypass uh, surgery this coming Tuesday let us all lift our hand into the heavens and uh, ask the Lord to bless that man of God and pray father we praise you and thank you for Lindsay's dad this morning we commit in, in him in your mighty hand the power of the Holy Spirit strengthen him this morning as he's going to the surgery table this coming Tuesday. I pray the hand of the Lord be with him. The power of the Holy Spirit strengthen him. Jesus, I pray that you walk into that operating room with him, O oh Father. I pray that you control every doctors, every instruments, every nurses, every technicians, every people who are working on him. Be controlled by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that you touch him and heal him completely, that we will hear a good news. I pray for the sorrowing family of Brother Papa, John Papachinangal. I pray that you comfort them this morning. Lord, I pray you speak to us through the powerful word of God. We praise him. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As we are in the presence of God this morning, you may be seated. I just uh, want to remind you that uh, our uh, John Papachinangal's uh, older brother's wife just passed away this morning with a heart attack she woke up and uh, made the bed and then uh, in the bedroom itself she just uh, passed away and uh, pray for the sorrowing family Papa Chenangal cannot be here because of the travel problem from India to here so he's trying to find a flight to come here but uh, I just want to say that 
you pray for the sorrowing family paapachanangal and family this morning i would like to speak to you from the word of god you know the continuation of uh, uh, last uh, sunday that last sunday i was uh, led to speak to you about that if you walk through the uh, waters the water will not overflow you it will not drown you and if you walk through the fire the fire will not consume you and uh, and you may walk through the troubles in your life but the lord's protection is there that's uh, basically what we looked at and uh, this morning it is going to be a continuation of the same uh, topic it is not uh, uh, you are passing you are in the uh, fire or you are in the water it just you are passing through it that's the topic i'm going to you are not going to stay in there for a while you are meant to not to stay there that's the topic you may face fire in your life so this morning i want to say if you are overwhelmed if your heart is so overwhelmed this morning i just want to say that you are in control the lord is in control of uh, uh, your life you may be asking how long lord that i have to go through these issues in my life but you are just passing through i quickly you will say look back and say lord i thank you that you let me through all this so i can just stand up and sing that i am a child of god and uh, with that thought i'm going to ask you to please turn your bible this morning uh, to a, a famous topic of psalm number uh, 84 verses uh, number 5 uh, and 7 praise the lord 84 verse 5 and 7 uh, sorry actually 5 through 7 blessed are they that dwell in the house they will be still praising thee Blessed is the man who strength is in thee in whose heart are the ways of them who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well the rain also fill the pool they go from strength to strength every one of them in Zion appear before <coughs> before the Lord so uh, Psalm 84 verse 5 said blessed is the man you are a blessed person you are a blessed child of God you may go through situations in your life but God knows all about you last uh, sunday that the word of the lord was so powerful i believe that it spoke it spoke back to me when i uh, sp- speak to you the word bible says the word of god is a two edged sword yeah. it goes that way and it come back this way also yeah. it blessed me as i was speaking to you and you were blessed and uh, the lord spirit is uh, here this morning if your heart is overwhelmed if you're a child of god you are a blessed man even if you face trials and uh, problems in your life but you just pass through i remember august 1st 1992 was a blessed day in our life that saturday morning yesterday also was august 1st that saturday mo- saturday august 1st 1992 my son was born and the reason i say that we had to pass through some uh, valley of baka as we read in verse 6 who passing through the valley of baka make it a well the rain also fill the pools verse 7 they go from strength to strength every one of them in sion appear before god so i remember my dad uh, being a pastor he had a vision and after tina was born we did not have any more children uh, many of you know the story i just want to say it for the sake of bringing glory to the name of jesus that when you pass through the valley of baka the word of god says that you only pass through you pass through situation to bring glory to the name of jesus that's what i'm standing here to say my dad had a vision that after tina we had no children the doctor said you could not have any children uh, uh, naturally and uh, i said i don't want any uh, uh, children unnaturally if god gives us a child we'll take it and soon after that five years have passed tina was born and then uh, the lord uh, gave my dad a, a vision and that uh, the vision was uh, finny and molly is going to have a baby boy is going to be born a son is going to be born my mom told him don't say crazy things to public but i tell you one year after his vision my son was born and i thank god the reason i say that through that pregnancy even though there was a promise of god enemy tried to destroy him through the pregnancy enemy wanted to take him away and we knew there's problem after problem and uh, my wife had to face challenges and she was bedridden for six uh, from six months onwards she was on complete bed rest so as the day came august 1st 1992 we were in the hospital and uh, 
she she had to go through a surgery to take him out and i went to the prayer room i knelt down before the lord in prayer lord i thank you that you brought us through this much but lord there is more problem facing lord your power come and deliver my wife and give me a, a healthy child because there was supposed to be problems but the lord heard the prayer i tell you that day we went through the valley of baka but the lord really helped us heaven and earth shall pass away bible says the word of god will never pass away the word of god is so true if he has promised you something he will take care of you if he has promised you something he will fulfill it for you, for you this is the lord that we are serving our god is faithful even when you are not faithful god is faithful this blessed man is only passing through the valley of baka that's what bible teaches he just passed through the valley of baka what is the valley of baka means it means the valley of tears there's a story historical story in the old testament you can go home and read i'm not going to stay on that subject but the valley of baka means the valley of tears this morning you are probably going through the valley of baka and saying lord how long do i have to be in the valley of baka but the lord's answer is that you are only passing through he is not staying there because this man of god is a blessed man he is not supposed to stay there blessed is that man who is walking through the ba- valley of baka what happened the lord will make it a pool of blessing the lord will not allow him to stay there forever even though that you pass through verse 7 says they go from strength to strength that you get more strength after strength after strength god wants uh, to empower you god wants to strengthen you when you go through the valley of baka when you go through the problems in your life god's purpose will be fulfilled in your life you may ask lord what is happening in my life the question may be there but the lord knows the answer already he knows the end in the beginning you are end you don't know but our lord knows and he knows what you are going through he is to bring glory to the name of jesus and blessing in the life so psalm number 23 we read that even though 23 verse 4 uh, uh, david is writing that yeah though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i want you to even if, if you never underline that verse you want to say i walk through the valley of the shadow of death you just walk through you just pass through the valley of death it says i will not fear for the lord is with me even when you walk through the valley even when you walk through the valley of baka even when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death the shadow of death may be there but the lord will deliver you that the that is the lord we are serving he say i will fear no evil no fear because god is with me while i am just passing through through the valley there's a song that i heard he is the god of the mountain he is the god in the valley he is when you are there he is with you in the top of the mountain when you are down in the valley he never changes because bible says my lord jesus christ is same yesterday he is same today and he is same for my future this lord is what we are serving he is the god of the mountain he is the god of the valley can you say this morning i will fear no evil even if you are passing through a, a tough situation in your life can you stand with the king david and say i will fear no evil because you are with me the lord is with you i have said i was saying about my son he went through a lot of problems when he came into the world and he didn't know he is an infant but many years ago when he went to medical school and there was a hurricane category 5 came where he was at and the hurricane made the landfall to the very place that he was at right on top of his apartment there where he was category 5 is the the last the worst state of category that the, they record for hurricane and we knew it's coming there but we could not go there to help him he, we knew that he is there we were just praying and for the next 5 days we were not sure what happened to him and we don't know where he was but we had a grim hope that lord who sent him there the lord will protect he went through the valley of baka we all went through it and the church prayed for him all our family and friends prayed for him we all prayed knelt down and prayed for him and we didn't know what's happening on the fifth day i told my wife like this today i will hear from my son today i will hear from my son fifth day i told my wife and the fifth day at 5 pm and the 5 5 fifth day on the 5 pm time the phone ring 
and I didn't understand the number, but I told my wife, it looks like uh, the foreign number, it looks like where he is at. And someone gave him a satellite phone, and he took the phone and he called me and said, just like I told my wife, Dad, I am alive. We just went through the valley of Bhaka, but the Lord delivered. I have to stand up and say that here. My Lord who saved us yesterday was his birthday, and I thank God yesterday, 2020, August 1st, Saturday, the same day. I thank God, even though the enemy tried to destroy you when you go through the valley of, of Baca, the Lord is there. The wind and the storms that comes in your life that, that you face us is not to destroy you. It is, to, it, it is only for a short season to fulfill God's plan in your life. God has a greater plan in your life than that you know. And when you go through the wind and the storm in your life, you go from strength to strength. You will depend on, on him. Last Sunday we were looking at Isaiah chapter 42, 43 and verse number 2. I just want to remind you that verse. I know we enjoyed the fire and the water and everything. But it says when you pass through the waters, I want to point that out to you this morning. You are just passing through the waters. I will be with you. If you have not highlighted that verse, I'm going to say, just highlight, passing through, only passing through that waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, uh, that you're passing through the rivers, uh, it will not overflow you, you're just passing through. Yeah. And when you pass through the fire, it will not burn you, you are just passing you. If you stand there, it may burn you, but you are not standing, God will not allow you to stand there. He knows the consequences. He just wants to make you go through it. It's his purpose. He is doing it to, for a purpose to make you that person, the woman and man that he wants you to be. Father, I praise you and I thank you for this word this morning. Speak to every children of God. I praise you that you are in control. In Jesus' name, amen. Every child of God will have to go through storms or trials in their life. If you haven't, I think you are an exception. Every child of God, one way or the other, you have to go through the storms or trials in your life. That is the plan of God. You will not bypass it. There is no shortcut for, from it. There is no detour from it. You try to take a detour, you end up in trouble. If you try to go through shortcut, you will not reach your destiny. God has a plan. Everyone. There is no detour. There is no shortcut. But you will go through it. I'm pretty sure many of you will say amen to that. Because you are still going through some of you. But the Lord is saying you are just going through. What happened to the children of Israel? We know the story. And we know when children of Israel, they were promised by God, the deliverer Moses went there and told them that the Lord is going to rescue from here. And the promise was that, that they will go to a land flowing with milk and honey. They are supposed to go to the promised land. So they got out very joyfully. But when they soon came out through the Red Sea, they found out they had to face a wilderness. God's original plan was to have them pass through this wilderness very fast, take them to the promised land in a few days. But because of the children of God, Israel, their unbelief, they had to make 40 laps around that mountain. We know that they were round about, turning around, making circles 40 years. That is because of them. But the Lord's promise is that I'm going to take you to the promised land. To get to the promised land, they have to go through that wilderness. To get to your promised land, you also will have to pass through the wilderness in your life. That is why you are going. There's a promise waiting for you, but you are just passing through. Bible calls it, it's a season in your life. It's a specific season the Lord has planned in your life. In the book of Ecclesiastes, you can go home and read. Don't uh, take the time to read the whole chapter. But Ecclesiastes chapter 3 speaks about season for everything. If you look at there's a season to sow, there's a season to read, there's a season to die, live and season to die. All that is there. Verse 1 I will just point out to you. To everything there's a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. In your life, if you are a child of God, you are going through something in your life that you are not expecting. That is the season that you are in. That season is very important. Listen. 
to me carefully if only your eyes of understanding is enlightened then only you will know that it is your season that that season is for developing your life to fulfill the glory of god in your life that season is there to for to prepare you to fulfill the purposes through your life that you must have the 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 two three weeks ago we were looking at that verse that apostle paul was praying about the prayer for church of ephesia that their eyes of understanding be enlightened that they may know what's the hope of their calling we all have calling in our life in your call you are going through and when you are going through you are going through a season there's a good season maybe there's a bad season whatever the season you are passing through for a purpose god's purpose is going to be fulfilled if you do not understand that there's a season in your life then you will not know what god is trying to accomplish through your life if you have not have that opportunity to sit down and pray lord reveal me then you will be a frustrated person are you frustrated this morning about the season that you are in then i would say just sit down and pray lord open or enlighten my eyes of understanding loose gospel we see that jesus christ is rebuking multitude for not understanding the season Luke's gospel chapter 12 verse 54 through 57 we see Jesus is rebuking the multitude for they are unable to discern the season or the timing in their life so verse 54 and he said also to the people when you see a cloud rise out of the west straight away you see there is come a shower and so it will happen you can predict the wind and the weather and the cloud when you see you know it's going to rain looking outside today it's a rainy day you can tell when you look at the outside looking at the sky and that cloud will tell you okay it's going to be raining for a long time yesterday my when my wife and i went for a walk in the evening time my wife said would you please get that grab that umbrella so i said do you want your umbrella no 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 you grab it i will just join with you and i i'm i'm holding this big umbrella and walking i want to make it look like i'm holding a stick so a dog come or something i can uh, chase them away so i i'm just because people will look at laugh you know you're walking with an umbrella so i had that like a walking stick in my hand and just walking and walking through the subdivision went to the main road and coming back and uh, this walking time is very good for us i w- i would recommend every husband and w- wife to go for a walk and uh, if you don't start it now and it will give you a good bonding you know you will learn to live together more and more if you start taking that walk so we were walking coming back it started drizzling and i thought i'm glad i listened to my wife because she looked at the cloud look at the sky and said it's going to rain and you know what's going to happen i would have come home because i had a hat without getting my head wet but my wife would be drowned in perfect love uh, of rain so i thought it was a good thing we had the umbrella but we had a good time we were just walking like 38 years ago we walked like that with an umbrella we thought about that you know it give you good memories when you do that walking in the rain 38 years ago we talk about we just got married 38 years ago so when you do that it give you a, a good connection it give you good memories and your relationship will so when you look at the uh, uh, my point is when you look at the sky you will know is it going to rain or not but jesus christ is rebuking this disciple this multitude of people out there and verse 54 and uh, 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 verse uh, 55 and when you see the south wind blow you say there will be heat and it comes to pass so you know I, yesterday i was talking to my wife on my way i said there's a hurricane coming into the florida area and uh, because of that i said we may get some warm air because the wind is going to blow from south to north i said we don't want to get the, uh, the rain but it will be good to have some good mo- uh, more uh, days of heat because our pavaka and vendaka and uh, people who watch us may probably not know what pavaka and vendaka vendaka is uh, uh, is lady finger or okra uh, and uh, pavaka is called bitter melon and all this will only grow in uh, a tropical climate uh, you get good fruit so i was saying it will be good to have this wind blow the south wind blow when the south wind blow you know the heat is coming but the lord is saying you hypocrite you don't even discern the time that you are the signs of the time that's basically what he's saying so it's very important to know the season that you are in 
if you don't know your season ask the lord to give you the discerning power or the eyes the heart the eyes of understanding be open that you will understand what is happening in your life every farmer knows the season the time to plant and time to harvest do you know any farmer goes and plant the seed in harvest time he is not a good farmer the farmer do not plant in the season of or of harvest if the farmer doesn't plant the seed in the season of sowing the seed he will not reap at the time of harvest a good farmer knows the right season in his life i saw a farmer's vegetable this morning when i opened my phone i said this look like a happy farmer lot of fruits and vegetables on his table you will be a happy farmer when you have the fruit that when you harvest you will be a very upset farmer if you do the other way around we need to understand the season in our life many people are frustrated because they are doing the wrong thing at the wrong time we will know the right thing at the right time when you have the discerning power the eyes of understanding be open so pray that your spiritual eyes should be enlightened so that you will know your season yes. psalm number 1 we will see a blessed man season yes. the first book of psalm psalm number 1 verse number 3 and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season So I wonder why the writer the psalm writer wrote like that. I wonder he didn't write why he didn't write like bring up forth the fruit in its season in his season. So I believe that's a person who is planted in the river by the rivers of living water. Planted in the church of God. You are planted in the church of God. You are planted in the church of God if you live according to the word of God knowing your season. what happen you will bring the fruit in your season in his season in your in her season in your season and a person come to you with sickness the season of sickness word of god says i am the lord that healeth thee you will quote that word and pray for that person that season you are bringing for the fruit when somebody come depressed you will say the lord is the strength of your life you will quote that word you are going to quote the lord is the light of my salvation he will put you will put some light in there because jesus christ said you are the light of the world in that season of suffering for that person you are going to be the light for that person in that season you will produce the fruit i like the next sentence his leaf also shall not wither something extra is given to you yeah. more than See, the Lord give you more than you ask or imagine. Right. You will produce the fruit in season. Not only that, what does Bible teach? When you ask the Lord, He will give you more than above and beyond. More than you ask or imagine. Above and beyond. When He give you, He will put it and He will press down and shake it down and give it to you overflowing measure of blessing. That's the God who go, uh, you are serving. It's a good God who you are serving. He is the Lord that we serve every day but receive the blessing from so he is saying that not only you will produce the fruit fruit in your season and also and your leaf shall not wither so uh uh-huh. so fruit and then the leaf and the next thing is whatsoever he does shall prosper are you prosperous this morning or are you really going the other way so what does it mean uh, the leaves shall not wither that means your leaves are always green here we know because we live in michigan during the month of september october time you see the leaves start falling we call it fall the season of fall but when you look around your uh, houses or go up north for to see the fall you will see some trees standing tall with green leaves they are called the evergreen trees it doesn't matter snow or rain sunshine or no sunshine evergreen will be always green that is the what the word of the lord says that your leaf is always green you can go through ups and downs in your life you may have sorrow and joyful time in your life you are always same 
your testimony is saying yes. you don't have a bad testimony that's what that means you have a good testimony and not only that whatsoever you do shall prosper where the lord says in the book of genesis chapter 39 i'm not going there but i want to quote it for you whatsoever joseph did was prosperous because the lord was with him a godly man's blessing but verse 4 says in psalm number 1 verse 4 the ungodly are not so but they are like the chaff which the wind drives it away that means that man doesn't know the season that man or the woman doesn't know he is like a, a chaff that the that blows by the wind and the storms of life three things i the first thing is i want to point out to you before was do not be afraid when you are going to face this kind of difficult situation you are only passing through the next thing i want to show you there is the next thing point number 2 there is three sub points are there the three things i want to point out to you is that when you are in the storms of life number 1 or if you are going through season of difficulty in your life you are not abandoned by the lord or you are not ignored by the lord you are in god's plan number one thing that will encourage you when you know that you are in the will of god that will encourage you. even when you face challenges even when you are in difficult time even when you feel like it's time to give up because it is too much for you but the lord's plan is to just to carry you through just pass by that situation the lord is with you he is not abandoning you that's very important for you to know if you look at luke's gospel chapter 4 verse 12 verse 1 and 2 you will see jesus christ after he was baptized the holy spirit came upon him like the form of a dove bible says at that time father from heaven said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased but we see in luke's gospel chapter 4 verse 1 and jesus being full of the holy ghost returned from jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness so we need to understand that jesus christ the son of god who was anointed by the power of the holy spirit well beloved by the father in heaven bible teaches us that he was as soon as he came out from the river jordan after the baptism and he was led by the holy spirit into the wilderness verse number 2 says that being 40 days there to be tempted by the devil so if jesus christ the son of god was led by the holy spirit to be tempted by the devil 40 days you know that he was in the plan of god the things that you are going through is because god has a plan for you point number 2 lord will guide you and lead you in your season of trial in your season of trial rather than giving up and uh, getting frustrated kneel down and pray and ask the lord to reveal the will of god in your life as you are leading me and guiding me in this season lord i know that i am a child of god what you have promised you will fulfill i am standing here that's why i used the example of my son as a testimony it's that i experienced in my life in my family life and the lord promised you something he will fulfill it even if the devil tried to take it away So Lord will guide you and lead you in the season of trial Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2 and word of the Lord says and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee 40 years in the wilderness There was a purpose for Lord to lead this people in the wilderness it says to humble you and to prove you to know what was in your heart God wants to know how faithful these people are God wants to know whether they will keep his commandment when they are in this wilderness. But his plan, ultimate plan is to take them to the promised land. Point number 3 in the subsection of number 2, in your difficult uh, point number 3, in your difficult situation, you will not be defeated. You will only get defeated if you give up and walk away from it. You just stay. Stay put. Stay there. I know I am in the will of God. The Lord who call me he will carry me the lord who brought you here will fulfill his task through your life then only you will go back god has a plan for you rather than you worrying about it let worry goes to god 
Just work, give it to him and say, Lord, I cannot carry this. I, I know that I will not be defeated because the battle belongs to you. Yeah. If you are in total obedience and totally surrendered your life to the Lord, God, you will not be defeated. God will fight the battle for you. Second Epistle of Corinthians chapter 2 verse number 14. Now thanks be unto God, Paul is saying, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place, in every place where, where you are facing difficulty or challenges and every place you are spreading the sweet aroma of the Lord Jesus Christ through your life. I understand if you take the rose petal and press it down more and more, you get some beautiful perfume out there. The more pressing comes, the more beautiful the smell is going to be. Rose petal itself smells good. But out of the rose flower, I heard good perfume comes out. But it has to go through some crushing. What comes out of you? Don't get to the point that I'm going to be giving up and walking away. You will not be defeated because the Lord is going to lead you triumphantly. Apostle Paul had to face challenges in his life. He had to pass through some difficult time. When you read Acts of the Apostle chapter, we know the Acts of the Apostle says that how he persecuted the church, how the Lord found him and said that this man, Paul, when Ananias was told by the Holy Spirit to go pray for Paul, Ananias was afraid to pray for him. And the Lord Spirit talked to Ananias and this is a vessel that I have chosen that he will be witnessing for me not only here and to the outer part of the, the country that where he sat. He will be a witness to the Gentiles for the cause of Christ. He will be carrying the gospel to uh, Asia Minor. He will be carrying the gospel to Europe. First time that gospel reached Europe, the church of Philippi came because of Paul went there with the team. All good things happen. But later in his life, he had to face, he faced a lot of, uh, he passed through a lot of difficulties, we know. But one of the things he say, uh, specifically, that should open our eyes. Acts of the Apostle chapter 27, Paul was traveling to Italy. He had to pass through a terrible storm that is called Eurocyclone. 20, chapter 27, verse 23 and 24. Verse 23 says that, For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and who, whom I serve. The Lord came in the midst of the storm that Apostle was facing. Apostle was in the ship, and the ship was about to be destroyed. And they all will be underwater near future. At that time, the very difficult moment, the Lord Jesus Christ came before him and and he stood by Paul and gave him a promise. What is the promise? Verse 24. Don't be afraid, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. And not only that, God has given all these people that are in the ship. If that storm did not come, Eurocyclone did not come, all that people will not belong to Paul. And all they were given to Paul. When you go through difficult situations in your life, there are great things waiting for you. The third point I want to point out to you that when you are in this difficult situation, word of the Lord clearly says that it is only for a short time. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 8 and 9, Paul went through difficult time. He said, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Trouble come, but he is not distressed. And we are per we are perplexed, but not in despair. Verse 9 says, we are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are cast down, but, but not destroyed. He faced all kinds of challenges in his life, but nothing happened. Do you know why? The answer is given in verse number 7. Go back to the verse 7 and you'll see. But we have this treasure in the earthen vessel that the excellency of the power may be of God and not us. In other words, the power of the Holy Spirit that came into your life is to strengthen you in the time of your need. The power of the Holy Spirit will speak to you. The power of the Holy Spirit will help you to pray sometimes when you don't even know how to pray. When you have this power of the Holy Spirit, you will be able to withstand the outside forces, outside pressure coming into your life. So verse 17, the same chapter Paul is saying, that our afflictions are not forever. It's only a short period. 
he even called this big problem comes into his life as the light affliction when he think about the glory that is coming after he saying the our light affliction which is but for a moment so with paul apostle peter says the same thing he, he apostle peter is saying we greatly rejoice knowing, knowing that when many temptations and many trials and many persecutions and many problem comes it's only for a season he says soon it will be over so apostle peter say first peter chapter 1 verse 6 wherein you greatly rejoice though now for a season if need be you are in heaviness through manifold temptations you may be passing through storms in your life as i speak you may be passing through fiery trials in your life that you cannot even explain to somebody else only you and god knows and you may be passing through troubles waters in your life that you don't even want to share your story with someone else but the lord will not allow you to stay in it for a long time you are only passing through while you are in it the lord is strengthening you to fulfill his purpose through your life say lord i know there's a purpose i will not be def- defeated i will not be abandoned by you you will be with me the lord who promised that i'll be with you even to the end of the ages with with you and ask him lord reveal your perfect will in my life if you are in difficult situation pray that the lord will open your eyes of understanding to know your season there's a season in your life may you understand that this morning may the lord bless you to understand why you are in this season may the lord help you to be stronger in your faith day by day when you are facing challenges in your life rather than getting frustrated lord i thank you that i am in it you are making me stronger and stronger day by day may the lord bless you this morning for attending to the word of god let us stand on our feet this morning and thank god for the word of god that came to us this morning the lord's perfect will be uh, will be done in your life if you totally surrender your life if you obey his commandment and walk in his, walk in his ways things happening in your life is not to destroy you it is to build you for a greater purpose ask the lord to reveal the greater purpose that he has for you every day we know the, uh, we study the word of god and we know many things about the word of god but some things we don't understand many things about your life you don't even understand but the one who understand your future he is the one carrying you day by day ask the lord to bless you and strengthen you when you are facing challenges and help you to understand the season in your life may god bless you this morning let us worship and uh, i'll come and pray with you in his time He makes all things beautiful in his hand Lord my life to you I pray may each song I have to sing be to you a lovely thing in your time in his time
spoke to me through this word I received this word as the word that fell in the good ground I am just passing through I will not stay in difficulty forever because it's not your will for me to be in difficulty I just pass through this to bring glory to your name to be a living testimony for you today as I stood here and explained my testimony about 28 years later how God was faithful in his promise God is faithful to your promise just say Lord I thank you for your word and I thank you that I, you spoke to me I'm receiving it and help me to serve you to fulfill your purpose father and I praise you and I thank you for all those hands touching their chest by receiving by as a sign of obedience as they are receiving the word I pray the power of the Holy Spirit manifest in them in a mighty way that they never experienced before I claim the powerful power of the Holy Spirit come upon them and strengthen them energize them and give them confidence to know the Lord is in it with them Lord I pray that you strengthen them and use them in the coming days and your name be glorified through them we praise you and we thank you that you heard our prayer and I bless everyone who prayed that prayer in the name of Father Son Holy Spirit we praise him and thank you that you gave us a beautiful word this morning. We give you all the honor and glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. May the love of God the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, communion of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forever. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. <laughs>